So good morning and welcome to TLC speaking competition. The media we are using this morning is Zoom and it's managed remotely by Rijo, our website management and training facilitator. This morning, I want to welcome our seven contestants, uh, two judges so far, and our three time management support team. May I ask uh, Sister Sonia to lead us with a word of prayer before we go further? Yes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time, Lord, where we can come together, Lord. Father, we, have, we live and have our being in you, Lord. And we want to just, Lord, just say that thank you for that opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity where we can come. And Lord, and we can present ourselves before you, Father. I pray, Lord, that uh, all the contestants, Lord, uh, who have come prepared, Lord, to share your word, that you will be with them, that you will strengthen them, Lord. And through this experience, that each one of them will have a little more revelation of you, more than what they had before. Father, I pray against any glitches that could happen during this time. And I pray that you will lead us and we submit under your leadership. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Sister Sonia. So uh, to the contestants, as you're aware, the subject that you have for this morning is the Jesus I know. Your time limit is five minutes. And once you have reached four minutes and 30 seconds, Samuel Salam will signal that you have remaining only 30 seconds and once your five minutes is over then Sudha and or Nisha will raise the signal. Uh, Sudha because we can't hear the signal reaching out so you might as well just say time up. Is that yes, okay Sudha? Yes, sir. yes sir. Yeah. Now as for the judges I want to welcome uh, uh, Sister Sonia Sherry, uh, Pastor Sherry's wife and uh, Brother Vinod who is the chairperson for the music department. Uh, we have only two on board on, uh, right now, which is fine. No problems with that. After every speaker, they will have two minutes uh, for their assessment and tabulation. And once all the contestants are done with, they will have another five minutes for an overall assessment, following which they will send me the final tabulations. Now, just that you know, the, the, we, are, we are at this point, we are giving up, giving up only the first and the second places. And that should be announced uh, by Friday when we have the TLC News Bulletin broadcast. Uh, if we are good, and if the judges are okay, uh, Sister uh, Sonia and Brother Vinod, are you ready? Shall we start? Yeah, we're good. Sister Sonia, are you okay? Are you ready to start? Yes. Okay, Brother Vinod, you're okay, right? Yes. Right. So, if I may ask Brother Jaker, our first contestant uh, to begin at the count of three, two, one. I will ask Jacob to start. Is that okay, Sam? And yes, please sir. leave Samuel. Please leave your so uh, your microphone on. Okay. So, Jacob, at the count of three, two, one. Okay. Good morning. Good morning to you all, uh, judges, and uh, all my brothers and sisters. And I thank God for giving me an opportunity to speak on this topic, my Jesus. Jesus, I know, is a very kind, caring, compassionate, faithful, and ever-loving, and a good friend. More than all that, I would say, like, you know, he is a great uh, father. I can narrate from my own, uh, you know, experience as a uh, testimony. Uh, in the year 1976, in Jan, when I lost my dad, uh, you know, of a heart attack, we were left with, uh, you know, nothing because my mom uh, was left with me who was three years old and my brother was six years old and our whole family has left us uh, to ourselves. And even the uh, 100 rupees uh, she had, she has to pay for my dad's funeral. So we started at the zero, okay? And uh, she knew one, my mother knew only one thing. It is, uh, she got saved a few months back. She knew only one thing, it is Jesus. So from that day onwards till now, he has been a great father. He held us, he held our hands, he carried us through all through the situations like, you know, no matter what it is, like no matter what situation we went through, no matter what, uh, you know, circumstances we went through, you know, he led us through. And um, even there were days at least when I longed for that, one day he spoke to me through the Bible, like, you know, from Psalm 68, 5. He said, like, you know, it's, 
he clearly says it's beautifully says like he is the father of fatherless so that you know uh, touched me a lot and that from that moment onwards i started to walk with him and he was a great father to me and uh, you know he was uh, you, you, you know, there are many instances I can, you know, keep on saying at least uh, testimonies after testimonies because he has been, um, even when the, there were times when I felt lost, there were times when I didn't know what to do. There were times when I didn't know like what decision to make. He was there for me as a father. He was there on my side, at least guiding me, you know, just holding my, you know, hands and he said like, you know, don't worry, my son, I was there for you. You know, even he's the only person at least, you know, who, uh, who could fill this vacuum in my life. Uh, you know, my, we, my mother did not leave any inheritance or my dad, but uh, he, she led me to Jesus. He's the treasure. You know, that's the best thing that has ever happened to me and my, you know, brother. You know, not only he was a, you know, great father, he's the good shepherd. Uh, you know, in Bible, it says like John uh, 10, 11, He's the good shepherd. You know, if you look at this word, the, it means the one and only. Okay. So whenever I use the word the, it means there is no one else. So he is the only good shepherd. Because, you know, there is no one else as good as him. So in times of like, you know, as a shepherd, he laid down, uh, as a good shepherd, he laid down his own life uh, for the sheep. It is for you and for me. You know, I can boldly say, like, you know, as Psalmist uh, says, like, I can join with them boldly and say, like, you know, my Jesus whom I know, he's a great shepherd. The Jesus whom I know is a great father. I shall not want, because when Jesus is with me as a great shepherd, when Jesus is with me as a great father, you know, I don't want anything, you know, because he is more than enough in every situation, like, you know, we pass through. No matter which situation, like, you know, we walk through, at least he's there when you know for sure he's there because when you can, you know, tune to his voice and when you can hear his voice through, you know, uh, the word of God, at least, or even through the, the men of God, at least, who bring that, uh, you know, word, uh, you know, when we can tune to hear his voice, uh, tune to the particular channel, like, you know, in radio, you may have a different channels, but when we tune to the particular channel that we want to listen to, when you tune to him, to hear his voice, you know, when we just learn, when we just like discipline ourselves. So when we walk with him, you know, we can say boldly, like the Jesus, I know he's the great person. He's the only person at least who can give us the comfort. No matter any situation, like, you know, we can lean on him. You know, you can just, uh, you need um, uh, comfort. You, you are just going through a tough situation. Like, you know, you can always lean on him. You can just always confide in him as a friend. Uh, you know, he's the best person. And uh, when he's with us, this Jesus whom I know, he will be a great uh, friend. He'll be a great father. He'll be a great shepherd for each and every one of us. Uh, this is what, uh, you know, I can only say. Time out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, my apologies. I did not introduce our uh, speakers one by one, but I will do that as and when uh, we go to them. Uh, Jaker is, of course, uh, as many of you know, uh, Nisha, Nisha works with, me, with us in the TLC administration. Jaker is... Uh, uh, Nisha's uh, husband, and he's also part of the 8 a.m. Uh, music ministry. So thank you, Jacob, for joining and for participating. Uh, the next two uh, minutes, I will give it to the uh, judges uh, for their assessment. And if you're done with your assessment, we can we can definitely proceed to the next. I'll wait for uh, Sister Sonia and uh, Brother Vinod to uh, uh, let me know if they are ready for the next. So, Rija, would you kindly uh, unmute them for now? Jacob, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our next contestant is Cyril. Cyril, uh, Rijo, would you please unmute uh, Cyril? Yes. Okay. Um, so Cyril, three, two, one. Go ahead. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity to speak about the Jesus I know. The Jesus I know is being called the Son of God, Son of Man, Son of David, Lamb of God, 
new adam last adam rock of ages i have noted down some of the great characteristics of the jesus i know the first one is emmanuel god with us matthew 123 he stays with us and in us when we invite him into our heart the second one he is a great healer and a miracle worker psalm 912 when he makes inquisition for blood he remembers them he forgets not the cry of the humble bible says whatever the sickness and weakness we have he heals them when we appropriate his healing from the cross he brings the dead person to life the third one he is the deliverer and a way maker psalm 81 he delivered the children of israel from the hands of pharaoh and made made a way for them to go to the promised land he has delivered us from the bondage of sin and leading us to heavenly canaan the fourth one he is the promise keeper and light in the darkness number 23 was 19 romans 421 bible tells us all his promises are yes and amen whatever he promised he will bring it to pass he is the hope of the hopeless he himself is the light that expresses darkness of sin his words never fail the fifth he is the father of the fatherless and takes care of the widows jeremiah 49 11 those who think that they don't have anyone to take care of them god jesus my jesus he takes care of them sixth he gave his life for all mankind and redeemed them from the end of the enemy uh, john 316 he paid the penalty for our sins through his blood by dying on the cross seventh he is a prayer answering god john 1414 Jer- jeremiah 33 was 3 god all god answers all our prayers if you ask anything in jesus name the jesus i know he is a great simple humble and a compassion and not a complicated and hard person he is the king of kings and lord of lords but also a servant king he is crowned with glory honor power and majesty he is a master planner and a master builder the depth height width of his love wisdom power knowledge understanding is immeasurable and beyond our human understanding he is the master teacher provider protector all powerful om- almighty omniscient omnipotent and omnipresent god he never rejects anyone who comes to him he never sleeps or numbers stumbles or boasts he watches over everyone and everything is patient he forgives he never keeps records of our sins he recreates every broken vessel he protects guides leads and saves he is a beautiful and wonderful savior the jesus i know he is my friend i walk with him i talk with him there is no one like him and none can be compared to him is is christ precious to you he is a, he is merely a, a name in a book a founder of the church a historical character if jesus is chosen and precious to god then it follows that he should be chosen and precious to you to you and all amen that is 3 minutes and 30 seconds yeah all right thank you sirly as you all know he works Uh, in the ministerial administration along with pastor vet uh, thank you for your contribution this morning sir thank you very much god bless so the next two minutes i'll give it to the judges sister sonia and brother vinod and once they are done they will get back to us the next uh, uh, is vishak uh, vishak please be ready uh, vishak is from the Uh, 8 a.m. service, right, Vishal? And he's also part of Brother Anthony's uh, life group, and uh, he's also involved with the Harvest Festival ministry and uh, other ministries as well. Am I right? Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, so welcome, Vishal, and uh, thank, thank you very much for being part of this event today. Just give us a few minutes, and uh, we'll go back to you. your uh, i'm done thanks sister sonia uh, your your vishak your life group uh, member uh, brother enel is encouraging you is giving you a thumbs up <laughs> thanks brother vishak i think uh, is possibly the youngest we have and uh, speaking today so yes we he was a little bit nervous but i think it, it, it. Yeah, i'm still nervous <laughs> hey, you got only 
a handful of people watching you, right? For that. Okay, we are good. Next contestant, please. Okay, thank you, brother Vinod. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, judges. So, we're going to the next uh, contestant is Vishak Soman. And uh, Vishak, your time starts three, two, one. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, respected judges, um, all my fellow contestants and all the believers present. Greetings to all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, well, uh, this is the first time I'm taking part in such a competition. And uh, yesterday we were all encouraged, uh, saying that it's, you know, you should not consider this as, uh, as a competition. I, I surely don't. I mean, but I, I consider it as a privilege to profess my faith and to, uh, wherever it is possible, to glorify the name of God. It is definitely a, a, a privilege of our lives. Um, and uh, when, like, the topic given to us, the topic at hand today is uh, the Jesus I know. So uh, the thing is, uh, uh, when when I saw the pamphlet, uh, like the flyer, uh, and uh, when Brother Anthony told us this is the topic, so I was going through the Bible and I was thinking, like, oh my God, this is this is. Although Brother Shaji yesterday he told us, you know, it's a very simple topic you can talk can in, even in your sleep. It is actually true, but yet this is one of the most easiest yet most profoundly complex uh, topics because Jesus is someone it will take a, even a lifetime is not enough to know the. Uh, characteristics of Jesus, um, his love, and basically in our lifetime, if we just are able to know the love of Christ, that itself is an achievement, and that itself is will be our life will be fulfilled if we really be able to tap into the love of Jesus Christ. So I was going through, uh, you know, I was uh, thinking, uh, Lord, what I should talk about? Uh, should I talk about you being the li living waters? Should I talk about uh, Jesus being the uh, bread of life? Uh, and then I had a close look at the topic which says the Jesus I know. So basically I just have to talk personally about Jesus and what Jesus is to me. And uh, Jesus uh, to me, uh, I mean, although he is, we as Christians like to say that Jesus is, we always say this, you know, Jesus is my personal savior. And I think that's the crux of the issue. That's the crux of um, the Christianity and the Christian faith. When we follow Christ, we essentially are, be, are saying that Jesus is my personal savior. He has personally come and saved me. Although he is, he is the uh, he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. But the uh, the the love of Christ remains the fact that he is my personal savior. He has redeemed me on the um, uh, by taking my sins on the cross. I want to read a verse uh, that has uh, that actually um, uh, God gave me to uh, uh, to explain uh, this topic. Uh, it's a very simple thing, but it is very important. Uh, it's from the Old Testament, Psalm 86, verse 5. Uh, you are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. When I went through this verse, for the first thing that came to my mind was, uh, God, I want to speak about Jesus. Why are you giving me this verse? Because this is from the Old Testament. This is a prayer of, prayer of David. But that's how it is, you know. Uh, the Bible says Jesus has been and Jesus is uh, the same yesterday, today and forever. The Old Testament God, at times we think we, we think that, you know, God's personality in the Old Testament is different from the New. It's not true. Uh, we might see different uh, aspects of his characters, characteristic in the Old Testament, but Jesus, God has always been the most kindest, uh, loving God ever. So when, when, when the psalmist David says, he starts it out as a prayer, the Psalm 86, but then he goes on to praise God and says that you are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. So basically, Jesus is not a God of, 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 of just Christians or, or, or a bunch of few people. No, he is abounding in love. There is no God who abounds in love, who is overwhelmed. Like his love is, is something that will overwhelm us. And that is the thing that I, that I, I personally feel in my life. That um, if, you, if you go in down the verses, we can see how you great God is, how marvelous his deeds are. Uh, David goes and speaks on that way. But... From in verse 13, he says, For great is your love toward me. You yet you have delivered me from the depths of the grave. So this is this is what I want to say that Jesus, the Jesus that I know, he has redeemed me. He is my redeemer. He has taken me from the depth of the grave, from from, from sins, and he has uh, seated me on the throne of grace. And that is the biggest privilege of my life. Uh, John 3 16, the golden verse that we like to say, always for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So he has taken us from the sins and he has given us eternal life. That's, that's the love that he has shown us. So for me, it's like um, when you ask a celebrity uh, to talk about their dad, you know, they will just...
not talk how great he is a celebrity as but how he is good as a person so for me he is a loving god and that is what he is going to be uh, thank you for listening i hope uh, this uh, this verse has blessed you god bless thank you All right thank you vishal thank you very much thank you uh, did you are you the same person who told me yesterday you have never spoken uh, <laughs> Okay. Anyhow, uh, thanks for uh, your contribution. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, while the judges make their assessment, uh, our next uh, uh, contestant would be Enel Anthony, a very familiar face in the compound uh, with the Praise Harvest Lord. Festival. Uh, with the Harvest Festival, Enel goes to the ATM service, Pastor Sherry's uh, service, and tremendous blessing especially with all the run around that he does with the brother anthony also part of his life group so uh, welcome to you brother and uh, as soon as we have the judges done with their assessment uh, we will start with uh, you brother and uh, after renal uh, it would be archie prado uh, next cluster number 5 yes done all right sister sonia uh, is done with and uh, now we're just waiting for brother vinod it's good next contestant please uh, thank you thank you uh, brother vinod so we have the uh, both the judges have cleared uh, for the previous contestant now brother uh, brother inel uh, it's your turn uh, welcome to this con competition so at the count of 3 so 3 2 1 you're ready to go praise be to the lord let us pray once again before i speak Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for such a time as this. As I speak, Lord, it is not that I speak; it is you are the one who is going to use me to speak, Lord. I lift up the judges, the council, the church, and the pastors, and everyone. I ask and pray in Jesus' name, Amen. I greet once again the pastors, elders, and everyone, my fellow contestants. I wish you good luck as well. Here I am going to speak about the Lord, our God. who spoke to me through various stages of my life through testimonies pastors elders friends my spouse my kids and everyone yesterday i was preparing I, still now i am not ready actually yesterday last night i was sitting and preparing at 1 am my kid my little one said let us go back to sleep you have to get up at uh, speak at 9 am so here i am i have been kind of experiencing pain and suffering for a couple of decades Uh, you know right now in a view of covid 19 crisis how lord our god spoke to me during the time of testing and suffering throughout my life because the happiness it's always everybody knows the testifying times is the one we learn a lot we grow a lot what god when it hurts how does he leads our life and uh, there is various tragedies i'm a christian for about 43 plus years that is where i have born from and my traditional christian background and the way am i again taking this out is that how i grew in these timings i'm a christian for 43 years as i said hebrews 5 12 to 14 says in fact i i'm not going to read a whole verse i'll just read out for the lack of time like i was a infant till i came to tlc then i grow to eat a solid food it's not who i chose jesus but he chose me and uh, he made me everything that i am today and he manifested in me and i am born again christian past past 10 years since may 2010 and uh, i've taken a further step to baptize myself in plc actually in the year 99 i was about to start a millennium i lost my job for the first time and uh, it's about 20 years back and how i spend my life was by drinking and by doing all sorts of nonsense which no, I, i shouldn't say here and uh, that's how i spent my life those days 20 years back and the uh, second time again uh i can say i chose my wife to be as my wife it is not me who chose the lord or god as the chose and she accepted it and uh the reason why she is more religious and she is more prayerful and she is till this point of time and the third testimony i will be giving five testimonies hope i will have a time and judges will consider me and we were in england in the year 
and again i was a jobless when our son was born and uh, but lord our god never let us down he provided us all through friends and everyone and uh, still he, he gave us wonderfully everything that what we need we never lacked anything and wonderfully he brought us back to india again 2010 i had to take a decision uh, as my wife was in kuwait i told my wife to come back but uh, pastor spoke to us told us go back and stay together again we came here and uh, we came to tlc we formed this church wonderful church and baptized and uh, had a born again experience and again into sixth year into my previous job in year 2016 again i lost my job what did i do this time i did nothing i was just praying praying and uh, during that time pastor sherry had started a new series in hebrews uh, sorry ephesians and it was talking about all the blessings i'm thinking oh my goodness i lost my job he's talking about blessing but pastor was talking about spiritual gifts but and ephesians 13 says praise be to the god our father our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in heavenly realms it's all about heavenly experience as a christian we need to grow and manifest lord our god every walk of our life let our life will lives be bible based jesus focused holy spirit led yes i'm copying this from our church but this is a motto for, for us as well amen and uh, from corinthians 9 24 27 it says we are running a race all of us all of us all the contestants and everybody we will win the prize it's not about who wins we will win the crown of life amen time's up time up thank you thank you thank you thank you judges for being on so the the time people is to be on spot uh, yes thank you so much brother anil thank you for what you have shared uh, blessings i will leave the next 2 minutes to our judges to complete their assessment in the meantime I'd like to welcome archie prado our next um, uh, contestant uh, as you all know archie he serves he serves faithfully in the shepherd shop and he manages uh, the shop over there and um, he's always got so much to share uh, he keeps on working on his christian education wants to learn more of the bible Uh, one of the things is that uh, always this man is with a smile always so it's great to have you on board archie and i will just wait for the judges to finish their assessment and they will come back to you and following that would be susan caro uh, uh susan also works with the shepherd shop and she's been with us for quite a few months now uh, tremendous blessing to the shepherd shop Uh, very faithful in what she does. So uh, next in line would be Susan. I would like to ask her to uh, get herself ready for speaking, for sharing. We're just waiting to hear from our judges. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, Sister Sonia is ready. Just waiting for Brother Vinod. Yeah, we're good. Next, next contestant, please. Yes, sure. Thank you, judges. Uh, our next contestant, uh, Archie. at the count of 3 so here we go uh, time management staff please take care uh, you you can go at the count of 3 2 1 please go oh, good morning brothers and sisters and uh, th- thank you for having me here yeah, i i am blessed to be part of this program uh when i am new in christian faith i started reading the new testament and i was amazed on christ's life and mission as the messiah and savior of the world for 8 years i served in different churches where i had the privilege of working for and observing a lot of christians and leaders including the pastors in churches uh, i i have been able to watch how human being treat each others people's life has been transformed and many things and as a result of my 8 years life experience christian life experience considered the study of the scripture especially the new testament testament i think god would embrace the origin first those who misbehave and worse of all just like me before <laughs> praise god i was changed so my poor was in joining here at first i was very hesitant i even questioned mr saji you know why me why me there's a lot of people there but god touched my heart that he wants to use me 
as an instrument to demonstrate not only to my family, to my friends, and to those who know me, but to all who will hear this message, the Christ love for all, and to experience this amazing love that only comes from God, that he wants you and me to be his friends. Several people raging from the great apostle Peter, and the adulterous woman, and some of the most unfortunate people uh, in all of Israel, the, lip, the lepers, those who could not walk, and some who are blind. Jesus healed them. He forgave them, and he loved them. To them, uh, to these people, he was a savior, a healing physician, and a dear friend. So everyone must answer the eternal question concerning the existence of God and the Messiahship of Jesus Christ, and what role each one will play in his or her life in this journey. Fortunately or unfortunately, this critical issue cannot be resolved in the laboratory or through scientific process. It comes from faith and trust in God and experience, experiencing his presence and his friendship. For me, Christ is a dear friend of everyone. So I have taken my, my scripture today in John chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. It says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friend if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because servants does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. So in this particular passage, Jesus commands us to love one another with love like he had for us that sacrificed even one's life. Jesus then returned to the importance of love and repeated the command that we should love one another as he loved us, according to the passage. Then he showed us again that love is demonstrate, but what we do. And the greatest love is that the one who will be willing to give his life for his friend because he gave his life for us. This is not only illustrates love, it defines love. Love is willing to give of oneself for the good or well-being of others. So this concerns others will cause us to put their welfare ahead of our own. So we have to think people others first because Christ came to save the loss. So that the, the greatest degree of that love, Jesus said, is that we should be willing to give our lives for someone else. This connected the love Jesus had for us because he was about to lay down for his life for us. But God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is taken in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. And this is love, that, that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as, his, as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us, we also ought to love one another. And loving one another will fulfill the law of Christ. That is in First John chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. Jesus Call his disciple friends, but show that obedience is requirements for this friendship. Then who are his friends? Those who do what he commands. He showed his love by dying for us. And Jesus calls us no longer servants, but he calls us friends. Jesus gave everything to us, to his friends, his knowledge of God, and in his soul life. Jesus is our model for friendship. Through friendship, we cannot come to know God. And through friendship, we end up love. I mean, this is the Jesus I know. Amen. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, Archie for stopping on time. <laughs> thank you very much. Well done. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, now we give the judges uh, their time to make the assessment. And uh, in the meantime, we will have Susan Carroll ready for her time. Uh, so. Um, so we wait for that. Affection Susan works for the Shepherd Shop and also partly now for the ministry and administration as well. Uh, so, um, are you ready, Susan? <laughs> I need to breathe my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we just wait to hear from our judges and then uh, we will start. Next in line would be 
our last contestant, that would be uh, Sil Sanji, that's Dr. Sil, uh, will be our last contestant for this event. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you. Uh, so we will move on to Susan Carroll right now. Uh, so if the Samuel students uh, initially are ready, we will start with Suzanne. Suzanne, three. Are you ready, Suzanne? Yeah, my heart beat is so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, it's just a few of us here, okay? Uh, so uh, just stay calm and do your best. You're, you're only speaking uh, to a few people here and everyone is only on camera. So uh, feel relaxed and uh, be blessed. So at the count of uh, okay. three, two, one, please go. Good morning, everyone. The Jesus I know. The Jesus I know is the Son of God who came down to earth to die on the cross for the sin of mankind. As a Catholic, this is the only thing I know about him. This is, I was so blinded from the truth, but everything changes when I become a born-again Christian. The Jesus I know opened my eyes to see things I couldn't see. Jesus taught me a lot of things. He leads me into the light from the darkness I was in. Jesus slowly changed the way I see myself because of his sacrifice from the cross. He helped me to forgive myself so I can forgive others by laying everything to the cross. Jesus never stopped pouring out his love in my life. And because of that, I gradually love him. I failed him a lot of times, but Jesus never failed me. For every help I get, I know it is Jesus. Jesus never leave my side, even in the times I choose my own will and not his will. Jesus always fights with me in all my battles, especially in moments I feel defeated. He pushes me up to keep going when I wanted to give up. Jesus showed to me through my dream that nothing can separate me from his love by pulling me out from the pit, grab me, and embraces me into his loving arms. I remember what Paul says in Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angels or other heavenly rulers and power, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. And on that moment, I knew Jesus is alive within me. And every time I will remember this act of love that he has showed on me, I am so amazed. For I know I don't deserve it, but he freely gave it to me. Sorry, I am not boosting of anything. I just wanted to share it with you. If Jesus can love a woman like me who came from the darkness, how much more he can love you? Allow Jesus to come into your life and open your hearts to him, like the Bible says in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus will not only be your Savior who died on the cross for the penalty of your sin, but he will also be your friend. A friend who you can trust of everything with your feelings and with your thoughts that you will never felt condemned. Jesus is also my teacher who teaches me to understand the things I couldn't understand, who guides me to walk into his will and leads me into a better life. He is also a father to me who disciplines his child from wrong choices and protects me from the worldly things. He is the lover of my soul. Jesus is the only one who can give an everlasting joy through his perfect love for you and for me. And that is the Jesus I know. All praises and glory to God alone. Thank you.
That is Thank three you. minutes, 56 seconds. Three minutes and 56 seconds. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And to now we'll give the, um, the uh, judges their time for their assessment and tabulation. As we prepare to go over to our final contestant for this morning, uh, Dr. Cyril. Uh, as you all know, Dr. Cyril is involved with quite a number of ministry ministries in the light of church. Uh, over and above being a medical practitioner, he also helps with the Harvest Festival. Uh, uh, he's a, a Harvest Festival committee member, and he's also assisting uh, Brother Anthony on a, on a senior level with the harvest and then again he's involved with the sea clinic and uh, he's faithful in what he does with the sea clinic and the doctor is also involved with the medical i'm sorry with the missions is that is that right uh, doctor you're not with the missions as well right i think it's uh, it's medical missions uh, for the philippine <laughs> Oh yeah, so the, you're talking about the uh, the Lighthouse Church uh, medical missions, the outreach, like the embassy and so on, right? Yeah, the Philippine embassy. Yeah, the Philippine embassy. So thank you for everything that you do so faithfully and passionately for the uh, the church, but overall for the uh, church body. And so, uh, if the once the judges are ready, we will go, go come over to you as our final contestant. I'm good. Yes, okay. I'm also ready. Thank you. Thank you, judges, for your time. Uh, so, panel to the Misha, you're ready. So, Dr. Sumul, over to you. Uh, let's start now at three, two, one. Yeah, good morning, elders, members of the jury, and my fellow participants. Greeting in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, just like Vishak said, like, uh, I've been given a topic like the Jesus I know. On one hand, it's a simple question. On the other, it's a fairly complex, complex. Jesus I know is not just someone who has been folded in mythology and handed down over to us through the generations to practice the blind faith or art of being good to others. As, as I was a growing, a fast furious Christian, I thought always Jesus uh, as my superhero in the Bible who always helped me, and I was a drive through Christian, when I would just flip through the verses of the Bible, get a verse, a small prayer, and get a quick answer. So life was happy, and it was going on. And something was still missing. Life started putting new challenges, and uh, bigger tasks. I, who was still in the mode of a drive through Christian, started uh, Asking God, but I could not get the right answers at the right time. You know? So I had to stop. I had to pause. I had to be still and place an order, wait upon the Lord. And once I surrendered myself to the Lord, I was convicted by the Holy Spirit. And by His grace, I was saved on the New Year's Eve of 2000. Now my perception of the Jesus I knew, which was a quick fix, drive through Christian, changed. I started developing a new relationship with the Christ I know. And I started spending more time with him in his word and by his spirit and through the Bible. The Jesus I knew became the Jesus I know as my personal savior. Life which has always been a maze for me did not make any sense. So with Jesus in me now as a personal savior, he has helped me to say, uh, make sense of this labyrinth called life. And it was as if the lights were turned on suddenly and everything came bright and clear. Though this experience has been for quite a long time, it is still fresh as if it has happened yesterday. And it is another proof of his uh, living presence in me. Ever since, the Jesus I know has been my father, my fortress, and my path. The Jesus I know is the Lord of my life. He is my ruler. He is my boss, the master of my whole life, he, in which he has got an authority both in the heavens and the earth. The Jesus I know is a fortress. He is guarding me from behind and before, from above and below and within me. 
the jesus i know is my path although i am a reluctant traveler with distress digress much too often but jesus i know is a lover never fails to nudge me back to follow him his word has become a light to my path and a lamp to my feet the jesus i know has made known to me the path of life and filled me with his presence and the people and in these days in this time of crisis many people lose faith and many people lose hope but for me personally this time has been a spiritual uh, experience being in the medical profession working in the eye of a storm jesus i know has been my strength through him i am able to do all things and he has been my shepherd caring for me all day long and he has been my sanctifier purifying me again and again so that i can be more like him the jesus i know is renewing my strength so that i can soar like an eagle above the storm he is drawing me closer and closer to him day by day as i meditate on his word and i spend more time in fellowship and devotion with our life group family he is giving me the courage to spread this gospel of good news to the people who have lost hope with the promise of saying the sorrow may last for the night but the joy comes in the morning i know and will never let me go if i were to wake up one morning on other side of eternity so jesus has been my way my truth my life this is the jesus i know thank you 4 minutes 45 seconds Sorry about that. Uh, thank you. It was uh, Pastor was calling just to make sure that everything is in order. Uh, so here we are at the end, and we have come to a close uh, for this uh, event. I just want to say thank you to each and every contestant who has participated. It is simply amazing to know uh, how God works and brings each of us individually, separately, into the love of Christ. and uh, getting to know him as a person see it was really uh, so nice to know uh, your individual experiences and what you had to share really was quite revealing and quite blessed too so uh, the uh, so what's going to be happening next is that we will the judges will stick on for some time for another few minutes uh, to finish the assessment and tabulation and i would like to say goodbye to the rest of you but before that before you do that i'm going to ask uh, brother vinod uh, to be praying for you and once again thank you for participating it was really really a blessing to have you all and thank you samuel for managing the time for sudha and for nisha for uh, being the time keepers for this uh, event and a special thanks goes to rijo who's been able to manage uh, the zoom and all the activities that he does remotely without even seeing him uh, from home uh, thank you for your contribution to rijo now i would I, if i may ask uh, brother vinod uh, just to pray and officially close this event let's pray <clears throat> loving heavenly father we we come to your presence once again lord for the all the days of our life are ordained by you you have a measure of everything that is happening in our life and that is going to happen in our life father i especially want to thank you for for this this one hour time father though these presentations were five minutes each the the amount of time that has gone into the mental preparation of this and while these your children thought prepared they meditated and waited on you lord i want to thank you for that special time father you enjoy our presence and father allow us to enjoy your presence lord father i especially want to thank you for this the season in our life lord father whatever be the name of it covid or corona or whatever be the name of it lord every season is given to us by you you are in control and you will always be in control i want to thank you for for uh, the organization of this event i want to thank you father god that that all that has been gathered during this time now it will not be just for this particular moment it will continue into, into our lives lord and we will continue father as i meditate on these testimonies which i heard lord i want to thank you for these lives of your dear children lord 
each and every one by name, Lord. Thank you for being faithful in their life. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you for holding them and upholding them, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for everything and everyone around them. Lord, you bless them, Lord. Thank you for our church, everyone who ministers in your vineyard, Lord. You honor them the way they honor you. And let your name be exalted. Thank you, Father, once again, Lord. And Father, as we continue to wait upon you, as we continue to look forward to, to this new season in our life, Lord, you be our King. You be our Lord in everything that we say and do. For you are our God. There's none besides you. Once again, Father God, we thank you for every arrangement, every provision, everything that has been done, Lord. Continue to be our Lord in everything. And you be in the midst of everything we plan and say and do. Be magnified, be glorified. We love you, Lord. We give everything to your hands. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. So, thank you once again. God bless you all. You may all exit the uh, meeting. And I will. what remains is I will just wait for our judges' tabulation. Uh, that will come to me by email or by WhatsApp. And the announcement, God willing, will be on, on Friday. You will hear it through the uh, news bulletin. But I just want to say this again in closing is that you all win us, really. In your own right, you have shared what uh, God has uh, you know, shared and how God has worked in your personal lives. And that itself is saying that uh, you're with us. Uh, so thank you all very much. Thank you to the timekeepers. And thank you for our judges, Sister Sonia and Brother Vino. Thank you for being here. God bless you all. Thank you, Richo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother. Uh, for organizing this. You're welcome. Yeah. God bless.